the first technique we are going to explore while we are enjoying our world of Blackstone Valley canal boats is the use of tracing paper. Tracing paper can be found at most art stores. It's generally quite inexpensive. You can get it on Amazon, from Michaels, from Diablo, and all sorts of other places. And all tracing paper is, is very thin paper. That's its sole purpose. So if you can see here, you can see right through this tracing paper. It doesn't have any other special quality other than it's thin. So if you have any sort of paper that you can sort of see through, it can serve the purpose of tracing paper. Now you don't have to trace. I'm just showing you different techniques so that you can learn how to handle work in different areas. But tracing paper is great if you've got someone in your family that isn't good at drawing but wants to do things because you as the person who can trace shapes can in essence make a coloring book for them. You can use tracing paper to trace things that they like and then transfer it onto the actual drawing paper or painting paper, whatever you're going to do. And this is a great way to work with someone in your household and make shapes and objects for them. Or if you yourself am not uh, great yet at drawing shapes freehand, then tracing paper can be a great way for you to transfer shapes that you want to transfer onto your destination and it helps you practice and learn the skills of drawing and how perspective works and all those other kinds of things. So step one with the tracing paper is to have a pencil <laughs> and to have a pencil sharpener. Sharp pencil. Ooh. Sharp pencils are lovely. Some strange noise outside like a tank is coming to attack us. I do not know what is going on in our world. Do you not hear that noise, Bob? Bob is ignoring me. Guess the tank is going to kill us all. You ignoring me, Bob? What is that loud noise from outside? No idea. I've got headphones on. Sounds like a tank coming to attack us. How close? I don't know. It sounds reasonably close. All right, we're all going to die. That's all right. So, with tracing paper, it is a good idea to tape the tracing paper to the paper that you're drawing so that it doesn't slide because you're trying to make a fairly accurate representation of the source image on the paper. And if you did the horses and then the paper slid at an angle and then you did the next part, then the ending design is going to be all off. So it's a good idea. Got my little snaily here. Just to tape the two together. You don't have to go overboard with the amount that you tape it. The idea is just to keep it from accidentally sliding while you're working on it. All right. So we have our tracing paper connected to our source design. And you don't necessarily have to draw every single little last line when you're doing this. It's just to give you a general sense of the shape and location of things so that when you're then working on this design, you put things in the right spot relative to each other. So we got the line up there, the line over there. And if, it, if you want to use a ruler for some of these parts, you can use a ruler. Depends how realistic you want to be. I tend to be fairly loose and abstract, or at least impressionist, <laughs> with the things that I draw. So I'm not aiming for super detailed, but it's still good to at least get the general shape of this right. Little windows 
So for example, I'll put in the windows, or I'll draw, I'll trace the windows, but I won't trace all the little panes right now, because I should be able to manage little splotchy panes. And again, when I do this, when I do the final painting, I'm probably just going to do little splotches of color in there to represent the panes, rather than carefully measure out where each of them is. So we got the little shutters. But imagine meandering around on a nice Sunday afternoon because you want to go visit a friend or someone who lives a number of towns down. If you walked, it might take you all day to walk there and you'd be exhausted. And then if you had to be back in two days, then you'd only get a short period of time there before you had to walk back again. But with the canal boats, you could have some lunch, you could relax and enjoy yourself, maybe read a book, and then you'd be nice and fresh when you got there much more quickly and you could spend more time with your friend. And as you can imagine, for the manufacturers, instead of having to worry about trying to transport their goods on wagons with the horses going through all of these hills and forests and all that other kind of stuff, and this way the manufacturer just goes to Worcester, dumps all their crates of things onto a boat, and then it appears as if by magic down in Providence. So that meant goods could move much, much faster. So it was all great. So in general, the canal system was wonderful. Oh. <coughs> Sorry. And the only reason it stopped was because trains came along and were even more wonderful. And we still use trains today, so trains ended up being a way that was a long-term investment. You know, the people who invested in the train system ended up using those trains for over a hundred years and still ongoing. Well, the poor little canal got taken apart and covered up. And if you go to Riverbend Farm, you can still see a part of it in Uxbridge. But you can just see a part of the canal. The only place to see an actual reasonably full lock is down in Millville. So that's how quickly things get built and then go back out of service again. Reminds us to be humble about the things that we're building now because we might think that they will last a long time. But in reality, life moves quickly. Alright. Alright, so now we have a pencil traced version of this canal boat and the horses. So the next step is to transfer this image over onto our destination paper that we actually want to do the drawing on. this whole thing out of here instead of trying to reach behind me. Alrighty. So the second half of this process is done with something that's at the very bottom of the bin, which is graphite paper. Alright, so this is graphite paper. What graphite paper is, is paper which is coated with graphite on one side. So in essence, the stuff that's in pencils. Let me take a piece of this out. So tracing paper is 
used for one design only and then just sort of use because you've got all those pencil marks all over it. And you can keep transferring the same design to place after place after place. But you can, it'd be pretty hard to put a new design on this tracing paper because you've already got pencil lines and the new pencil lines would be confusing with the old pencil lines. Uh, hold on, let me get to my scissors. Just a second. Alright, scissors. So that was our original drawing, or source image, and then this is, let me turn this over, this is our pencil tracing of it. So we could use this pencil tracing over and over and over again for that particular image, but if we wanted to draw a cow or something, it would be really confusing if we then traced a cow over the top of this because we'd have the existing lines and the new ones. So in general, it's good to use tracing paper for something in particular. I suppose if you want to trace something up in these areas, you could use those blank areas, but I wouldn't try to use tracing paper on top of an existing image because the lines would all be crossing and it would be confusing. So now that we've got our canal boat on tracing paper, we want to transfer this over onto watercolor paper. I'll use this Bristol paper, which is an inexpensive watercolor paper. You can transfer yours onto whatever kind of paper you want. I'm going to use watercolor paper because I'm planning on painting watercolors. So the way that you transfer your design from tracing paper onto your destination, which could be watercolor paper, or drawing paper, or whatever you want, is to use graphite. So a piece of graphite is blank on one side and shiny on the other side, and it is coated with graphite, which again is the stuff in pencils. And this works through pressure. So if I put it down, and it should be the shiny side, and it doesn't have to be a pencil. Let's see if I have something else pointy that I can use to show. So a screwdriver. If I make a mark, if I draw a line with pressure, it pushes the graphite out onto the destination. So it's not about the pencil. It's just about something making pressure, dragging across, and it will push that pressure through, and it will push the graphite off the paper onto your destination surface. Now we tend to use a pencil for this process just because it's easier to hold a pencil and to draw with it than to try to draw with a screwdriver or something else. But just uh, know that it doesn't matter. It's not like the pencil is magically going through the tracing paper and the graphite paper and stuff. The pencil's purpose is solely to press down against the graphite and to push the graphite off the graphite paper onto the destination paper. So let me move the rest of these out of the way. Put that over there for now. So in order to transfer this um, without things wiggling, we're going to do the same taping that we did before. We're going to tape the tracing paper to the destination paper. So we got some tape here. Because if the paper went moving around underneath while we're sitting here tracing our line, then we could end up with pieces of the boat disconnected from each other as things were sliding in the middle of this process.
All right, so we've got the tracing paper on top, graphite paper in the middle, and then the watercolor paper on the bottom. And now what we're going to do is trace along these lines we made before so that we push the graphite through to the destination paper. Now we're tracing with a pencil and the design is already in pencil. So it'll be really hard to tell what we have traced and what we have not traced. So it's good to start on one end and to trace our way to the other end so that we have a fairly good sense. And I mean, we, we can sit here and peek along the way, but that way we get a, a general sense that we've made it through everything and we haven't left anything off. All right, so I'm having to do this around the tripod, which is a little challenging. Make sure I didn't nudge it too much. All right, here we go. So I'm going to start from the horse end. So now my task is to trace the lines I did. And again, the idea is not to get every last little nuance of the horse, but to give a general idea of its proportions and shape. And that way, when I get to the painting stage, I put things in their generally right space. And it's good when you do the first part to look and just make sure that it's transferring properly. That way that you know that you're pressing down hard enough, that you have the graphite paper set up right, because there is a front and a back to the graphite paper in the sense that with the shiny side down, that's the side with the graphite on it, but there isn't graphite on this side, so if you had it the opposite way, um, you would not press anything out of it onto your paper. Of course, number two. This little collar. So you can do this with any image that you want to work on. You can print out a copy of the image. You can trace it. Heck, you could even hold the tracing paper up onto your computer monitor and trace right from the computer monitor. And then you can transfer it with graphite paper onto your destination surface. And while tracing paper is generally one design only because it would be hard to then have like a fish shape or something and try to trace the fish where there used to be horses. The graphite paper can be used over and over and over and over again. You might think that I'm pushing out the graphite in these spots so that graphite is used, but in practice there's enough graphite on there that you can keep using the same piece of graphite for all sorts of different purposes. If I wanted to do a fish next, then I could use the same graphite for the fish design. I wanted to do a cow next, I could use the same graphite for the cow design. So I'll do the top first. So you can keep using and reusing the graphite paper. And also, like I said, you've got all these blank spaces on the tracing paper. So if you want to do another smaller design, like a fish up there or something, you can use that area for the fish. And it doesn't matter in terms of the final design, because when you're tracing and stuff, you just work in that area. You just don't uh, touch the horses area. The only thing that gets transferred are the things that you press on right now during this second tracing process. That's all that the graphite paper knows about. The roof. I'm pressing sort of hard because I want you to be able to see it. But if you want there to just be faint hints of what the design is to give you some guidance, you can do this in a light manner. And then you would just have little faint images to work with. All right, we've got the windows with the shutters. Nowadays in New England, many houses have shutters which are solely decorative. But back in those days, glass was fairly expensive. 
So a lot of windows would not have glass, they would just be open. And then if it got cold or raining or something, they would close the shutters. And that's how they kept the inside from getting rain or snow in it. All right, so we got the windows with their shutters. Put some of these stripes in. Another stripe. All right, and now since it's taped on, we can peek. Oh, I didn't do the back. So we can peek at it. Hmm. So this is the bottom one. There we go. And we're just making sure that we copied everything that we wanted to copy. Alright, so when you're sure that you've got all the different parts traced, that you're interested in tracing, then you cut off your tape. Alright, so now we have our piece of watercolor paper with a base design on it. If we wanted to make more of these at some future date, we still have this tracing paper all ready for us. So we could sit there and trace this onto as many different things as we wanted to. Let's just keep using this. And like I said, we could use the empty spots of the tracing paper <coughs> for other things later if we wanted to. And this graphite paper is reusable quite a lot. If you look carefully, you can sort of see where this particular design was drawn. But there's still plenty of black left there everywhere that you could use this and reuse this and reuse this. So this is a uh, quite reusable surface. All right, so that is how you trace a design from any source image to a destination place for you to start working with. So let me know if you have any questions about the tracing process. Again, here is our original image and if you are good at drawing freehand you could have just drawn that freehand you didn't need to do the tracing process but we're just showing you how to do that in case that is helpful to you so now we have got the base image done in pencil and there's all sorts of different paths forward that we can take from this mm -hmm.